Ah, crap. <laughs> ah, crap. I almost dropped the phone. You'll probably watch this and be like, Ariel, why didn't you record here on the first video? This is way better lighting. And I can hear you much clearer too. Oh, I live in a house that's very old and it has very faulty wiring. And so we have these fire detectors and no matter how often we change the batteries, that always happens. So you're going to hear a few beeps throughout this video. I hope that they don't distract you and if they do, I apologize so much. But for the sake of better lighting and better quality with the sound and just everything like that, I'm going to re record here today. I hope you don't mind. Hello everyone, my name is Ariel, but you can call me AJ. I'm from the United States more specifically California, and I'm taking part in a project here on YouTube to help English speakers like myself, as well as many others all around the world, learn all about Korean language and culture. I'll try my best to teach you everything that I can in the easiest, funnest, most simple way that I can. I'm still learning myself, so go a little bit easy on me. But I hope that you'll still enjoy these videos and that your knowledge of Korean language, culture, and society will expand with mine as well as all the other viewers. You can also watch You can also watch this same video and many others like it in the future in different languages through teachers of various nationalities on the same channel. So, if there is a language that you are more comfortable with speaking that is in English or you've just learned a language and you want more practice hearing a native speak it while also learning all about Korean language and society, you can do that on this here channel. Just scroll through the videos and you're more than welcome to watch one of those. So in this video, I will be talking to you about Jondemal and Banma. Basically, there are two ways to speak Korean. One is a more formal version, which you use with people who you are unfamiliar with or who are older than you, just elders in general. Uh, and it's called Jondemal. I recommend that you make it a habit to speak in Jondemal if you aren't too fluent in Korean or if you're not sure which should be used in a situation. It's a lot easier to just go with the formal language as it's like a very, very... <sighs> Koreans are very strict about this. so. If you don't want them to see you as kind of like a spoiled, uneducated brat, then just go with John de Mal at all times because it is considered disrespectful to speak to someone who you are unfamiliar with or who is older than you in Ban Mal, which is the informal language that you use with people who you are familiar with or who are younger than you. Now the question is, I'm looking at myself again, I need to not do that. <laughs> Now the question is, how are John de Mal and Ban Mal different? There's a lot of differences between the two, but I'm going to give you the easiest one in hopes that I don't hurt your head. Just to give you a little bit of information on John de Mal, I will tell you this. You've probably heard a lot of sayings and just sentences in general finished with da. Da is a formal speech and literary style. When you end a sentence, in da, like da, which means be having a meal, or gongbu handa, which means be studying, or il handa, which also means be studying, because you heard it like that in TV, or you saw it in a book, heard it on the radio, whatever the case, and you think that that is formal speech, these are not don de mal at all. It's more like talking down. So, you should end the sentences in nida. Bakmoksum nida, gongbu ham nida, il ham nida. Difficult? No worries. You're just starting out, probably, if you're like me. And grammar can be a little hard in the beginning. So just remember that da is not formal speech and you should end sentences in ni da when speaking in John de Mar. For fun, I'll let you know a slang word for young people normally. It's pakchida and it means like get angry, get furious, get 
you know, pissed off. But you'll hardly hear pakchida because it is the basic form of the word. In most instances, when you hear someone say it, it'll be like pakcho or pakchinda. If you say this word when you're with Koreans, they'll probably laugh because it's funny to hear foreigners say words that, you know, normally aren't in the little language booklets, right? So <laughs> they might find it funny, they might find it cute. It doesn't mean that the word is cute, it just means that they find you saying it kind of cute. Like, huh, oh, that's, that's funny. <laughs> The word is spoken by both young men and women, but in Korea, women try not to. Mm. <laughs> in Korea, women try to kind of be careful with the words that they use, as a lot of them like to appear more cute. And like I said, this is not a cute word. <laughs> Even in Korean, there is a word that you may have heard before, and it's called. It's really hard to translate this word into English because there's no like direct correlation. There's no, how do I put this? There's no like, there's no like word in English for egyo. Egyo is like when a girl or in some instances a guy, you've seen idols do it all the time, probably. <laughs> it's when someone is trying to show their affection and they get like cute and they try and sound like a baby. E means love and gyo means play the... And gyo means play the coquette. <laughs> it's most often used to describe the like affectionate mannerisms of a woman towards her, you know, male friend or boyfriend or husband, whoever it might be. So since there is no direct word to translate this to into English, most times you'll hear it is just like acting cute or being pedalant pedalant <laughs> okay most times girls will say the word jangjunna it means annoyed but it's a word that a lot of girls will use very often whether they're upset or actually annoyed it's like if something doesn't go the way that she wanted it to and she's upset about it she'll say Mostly Korean people say yolbada when they get upset or if they're angry. Yol is fever and bada is like receive. Receive. So it means that you're like receiving the fever from someone, if that makes sense. <laughs> An old slang would be like Yamadora. Yama is a Japanese word that means head. There are a lot of Japanese phrases in the Korean language just because of the very terrible history between the two countries. You know, the time when Korea was a colony of Japan. And so, yeah. There are a few Japanese words in Korean language. But the thing is, a lot of Koreans still are not happy with Japan behind just everything that went on. And so sometimes people will say these words to a Korean person thinking that they're Korean when they're actually Japanese words. And it's just not a good situation. So always be very mindful of which language you're speaking. <laughs> I'd also like to emphasize that me teaching you these slang words is not me trying to teach you vulture- I'd also like to emphasize that me teaching you these slang words is strictly for the purpose of you understanding Korean conversation. I am not in any way trying to teach you vulgar language, so if you are not comfortable with these words, then do not use them. 
Let's go back to John De Mai and Ban Mai. Actually, we learned two things, so let's review those really quick before John De Mai and Ban Mai. Pak Chinda and Pak Cho mean like getting ticked off, getting mad, getting furious. And those are in Ban Mai. In John De Mai. Why would you knock on the door like that? <laughs> Sorry about that small answer. My bad. Sorry about that small interruption. Let's get back into the lesson. Pak Chinda and Pak Cho are both in Ban Ma and John De Ma. They would be Pak Chidayo and Pak Choyo. Pak Chindayo and Pak Choyo. Pak Choyo. Pak Choyo. Pak Choyo. Probably ring it wrong. But Pak Chinda is a slang term for younger people. And so when you're upset or angry and you want to express it, a better term to use would be Huanayo or Huaganayo. Hua means fire and Nada means rise. <laughs> so it means like a fire is arising in your heart. So let's practice again. Again with the beep. So let's practice again. Hua nayo and hua ga nayo are the same thing. You may hear some children and kids ending their sentences in da yo. Da yo is baby talk. Kids will end their sentences this way to sound cute. Like ba mogo da yo, which means had a bill. Oh my gosh, I'm cringing. Oh. Oh, I'm not cute. Oh my god. This this hurts just a little bit. Okay. Um it uh Gang Buhan Dayo which means study. They are the cute baby talk ways to finish sentences. This feels so weird to say. <laughs> oh, it's so awkward to say. Please, please. Don't make me say it anymore. <laughs> so let's review some Korean words that you've heard. Mori means head. Mori. Ba means mill. Ba. Gongbu means studied. Gongbu. 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 Gong bu, gong bu, gong bu, gong bu, gong bu. <laughs> what am I doing? All right, we've come back to John de Mal and Van Ma. What did we learn? Basically, the biggest difference between the two languages is that instead of ending sentences the way you regularly would in Van Ma, when it comes to John de Mal, you add yo at the end. So, Van Ma does not have yo. John de Mal has yo. That's the big difference. Now you're probably asking yourself like, but Ariel, you said that Nida is John de Mal, but you're also saying that yo is John de Mal. So what's the difference between those two? Nida is a formal, formal speech. And so, when you're always ending your sentences in nida, it sounds very robotic. And when you are speaking, it is the best to use yo. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you had fun learning stuff with me because we learned this together. Basically at the same time, we here. <laughs> Anyway, I hope that you'll continue to enjoy all of the videos offered to you on this channel and that you'll subscribe 
for future content. Until next time, bye!